General Grievous was a notorious Jedi killer, fighting against several notable Jedi, including the likes of Kit Fisto and Obi-Wan Kenobi over the Clone Wars. Grievous not only contended with many Jedi, but was also able to outright butcher several of them. This is insanely impressive due to his lack of a connection to the Force, and his ability to not only contend with, but crush those who do have the Force is extremely impressive, as well as terrifying. But how is this possible? Why is it that Grievous can contend with Jedi without them simply using the Force against him to instantly defeat him? The explanation begins with the way Grievous was taught to fight. Count Dooku trained Grievous as a duelist knowing full well he would be at an instant disadvantage due to his lack of a connection to the Force. Because of this, the Count taught Grievous to undermine a Jedi's connection to the Force through fear tactics. Grievous mastered the tactic of mentally defeating an enemy before their blades even ever clashed. He would often prey on the weak Jedi first, letting the fear and anticipation of a battle boil to its breaking point. When he did eventually engage with them, he would do so swiftly and attempt to overwhelm his opponent immediately, in most cases opening his duels with two or more lightsabers activated and attempt to either drive an opponent back or cut them down as soon as he engaged. Grievous used shock value to a T, and when a Jedi or any Force user is distressed, specifically those that adhere to the light, their connection to the Force is hindered to some extent. When Grievous actively attacked them with up to 12 lightsaber strikes a second at his peak functioning capacity, calling on the Force seems nigh impossible. Dooku also counseled that if Grievous believed his intimidation not strong enough, he should retreat, for the very reason of a Jedi having skill with the Force. This was Dooku's full expectation of Grievous when engaging Jedi Knights. Stop using the standard attacks. Use the unorthodox. Faster. Destroy my focus. Don't let your pursuit of trinkets cloud your reality. Remember what I taught you, General. If you are to succeed in combat against the best of the Jedi, you must have fear, surprise, and intimidation on your side. But if any one element is lacking, it would be best for you to retreat. You must break them before you engage them. Only then will you ensure victory and have your trophy. Grievous' cybernetics also allowed him to better ward off force-based assaults by Jedi. Grievous' legs were able to clamp down on almost any surface, allowing him to stay grounded if met by a force push. Ragdolling an opponent with the force is also extremely difficult to execute for those who are unbalanced. In order to do so, a force user would need a moment to muster their abilities, or again, outclass their opponent by a big extent. We saw against Barriss, Anakin required a moment to bring his full power to bear against the fallen Jedi, and in the case of Sidious and Maul, we are witnessing quite possibly the most powerful Force user alive at the time do what they do best. However, there have been several occasions where Grievous has been met with a Force-based assault and actively failed, with examples from both canon and legends. In Legends, Mace Windu used the ability of Force Crush on Grievous during the Battle of Coruscant, and it was highly effective. In the novelization for Revenge of the Sith, Obi-Wan actually used the Force in a more undermining manner against Grievous, where he reversed the polarity of General Grievous's arms, causing him to drop a lightsaber, a tactic Kenobi would later use against Darth Vader on Mustafar. This Force display, of the less grand fashion, would be best implemented against Grievous, and prove more effective than a large outright assault. However, later in the duel, when Kenobi was granted a moment to muster his abilities, he hit Grievous with a devastating force push that disarmed him of his remaining lightsabers and effectively ended the duel. In canon, in the Son of Dathomir comic, Maul was able to force push Grievous a great distance, as well as Ahsoka pushing him back with her use of the force. Again though, Grievous prepared for this, with his armor being extremely durable, and he almost anticipated to be thrown about if he met an opponent powerful enough to do so. Again in canon, when Grievous engaged Deepa Balaba, he was able to tank a force-based assault on her behalf, as one of Grievous's major tactics was simply to take the blunt of an initial attack, and then come right back at you with a full-blown assault, and to undermine his opponent's very connection to the thing that could defeat him. The general also used his immense speed to dodge many force-based attacks, with him displaying dodging multiple force force pushes during the Battle of Coruscant, and in many, if not all of his battles, Grievous was the faster opponent due to his cybernetic enhancements. And the final reason that contributed to Grievous's success was the Jedi themselves. A major flaw of the Jedi, this era in particular, is they often lacked the readiness to use the Force as an offensive weapon, as they often utilized it for defense over attack. Grievous never engaged the likes of Anakin Skywalker, who was one of the more aggressive Jedi, and likely may have found great success attempting to ragdoll Grievous with his use of the Force. To answer the question of Grievous' effectiveness against the Jedi is simple, he not only constructed his fighting style, but very body itself to undermine the abilities of a Jedi Knight. He used his cybernetics to outmaneuver them, and used fear and intimidation to disrupt their connection to the Force, and focus overall. 
Against the likes of Sith or Darksiders, Grievous would likely see significantly less success, and we have even seen this before, with Ventress defeating him on Dathomir. So to answer the question posed at the beginning of the video, the Jedi have used the Force against Grievous to varying degrees of success, however, he has prepared heavily for much of them. But I would love to hear your opinion. Does this explanation satisfy you as to why the Jedi failed to use the Force on Grievous, or do you prefer a different one? If you have any future suggestions you would like to see made into a full length video, please do not hesitate to leave them in the comments down below, as I go through them very often. If you enjoyed this video, and feel it deserves it, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like, as it helps me out a great deal. If you would like to interact with me directly, the best place to do so is on Twitter, at StupendousWave. If you haven't already, maybe consider subscribing to increase the up to date with everything Star Wars related from news, theories, and explanation videos. Thanks as always so much for watching, may the force be with you, and have a great day.